are live. Just letting you know. Ah, good. I got asked last week about what make of brush I was using. I don't know why it doesn't really matter, but I, I was looking at some. This was quite a long hogshead brush at one point. It had bristles up to there and it's, it's got worn down over the years and I still use it. I still have a use for it. But it's been damaged. One of the problems is if you leave a paintbrush in a pot of water, the, there will always be a weakness in the lacquer and the water gets into the wood and it expands and it breaks the lacquer and you end up with a, a brush in pretty poor condition. But I still find it useful. And this is another brush that's way beyond useful in its original state but I still find I can use it so I keep these old brushes this is another one that's worn down a great deal I keep them because there's always a use for them um, I finished this pretty much as much as I want to go on it and I want to work now on the foreground both left and right and my plan here was to add trees in the foreground so it gives that scale and pushes it back so I was thinking trees from about here coming down and sort of in a, in a slope down as you go towards the right and these are some sketches right You know we can't see that. Yeah. Okay. So this is the first sketch I did to show how it might be. Same situation. Changing slightly the trees, still playing around. And So this is an idea of where I'm going with this painting. Okay, it may not end up looking exactly like that, but that was the starting point. And for the distant background, I was looking at some of the sketches I did on the first days. So this is one. Um, These were a couple of others and I'll be going back to these as I work in the middle distance and the far distance. But today at least I thought I would try and get those trees in. Now one of the problems I had is when I first painted trees in here they disappeared because the Prussian blue and, and uh, Mars black it's almost impossible to see the difference. So I'm going to, okay, this is the... Oh, I can just about see that. You can see it? Just. Just, yes. It's, there's not enough difference. So there's two possibilities. I can brighten the sky or I can find work with a darker black. So the first thing I'm going to do is try a darker black. In this make of paint, the darkest of three blacks that they do is carbon black, which is, and it's poisonous. So, 
but so many paints are you just have to be careful of them all basically um Chengis wants to know what is the meaning of what are what is the meaning of, of stars on Magna Carta's Lord of the Ages what is the meaning mm. God, I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry, too far away. A long time ago, that one. Yeah. Yes, 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 I can't remember that. I might by the end of this session, but not off the top of my head. Would you consider illustrating Dante's Inferno? No, I, I have been asked by lots of authors to consider illustrating books, and the one of the ones that I found for a very attractive idea was um, talking to Ursula Le Guin. She wanted to know if I would be interested in illustrating The Wizard of Earthsea, and I had to tell her it would take me two or three lifetimes. I just don't produce that many paintings. I do about three or four a year. And, you know, for a book to feel illustrated, it would probably need 50 odd. So, you know, for me, that would be 12 or 15 years. Okay. Even in carbon black, this is not showing up. Can we look over your shoulder? <laughs> so I, I've got two options here. I, can, I can't I can go darker. I can lighten the sky a little. I don't really want to do that. Or I can put snow on the trees, which was kind of a plan. So that's where I, the, the direction I think I'm going to go with that one. Is there, uh, Colin asks, is there any particular painting you would never consider selling and why? Um, to me, it doesn't quite work like that. I can think of a couple of paintings where I'd sell one or the other, but I don't mind which. Um, but I wouldn't sell them both. Like what? Well, say Tales and Relaya. I would want to keep one of those very early pieces. Um, maybe I I put. Um, I'm going to have to go and get some more paint. A different paint. I probably put um, Asia's second album in that category. Which one was that? Which one's the second one? Alpha. So you would sell Tails or Relayer, but not both? Yes. So you have both still? Well, I have Relayer. Your mum has Tails, so that would be down to her. Mm. So Peter says they've lost us. Let us know if the connection's okay. It looks like it's okay. I'll just turn my phone off. I'm going to paint the trees in, in blue, not because I want them blue, but because I can see them and then... Yeah. Okay. Oops, sorry, I just wanted to have a little look, but it's difficult to see yet. They don't show up much, but they show up enough for me to be able to work as a rough guide about where, where they're going to be. I, uh, I 
asked if the connection was okay and someone wrote God here and I got I'd forgotten I'd asked that question I thought <laughs> <laughs> it's nice is it okay nice is of it him to join us apparently it's okay apparently it's okay okay great do you still have the original of Fragile Luigi asks no um the, the front cover of Fragile was stolen about 20 years ago and it's one of several that have been stolen over the years. Where do people steal them from? Well that one was, they went from the studio when, when we moved into storage and I think they went from the storage facility. can see that tree let me see if we can get it pick it up on here the problem really is that um, they weren't there after they didn't come out of storage and I'm pretty damn sure they went in so it, it's it, a difficult thing I can't prove anything one way or the other and I was approached by somebody who said they had acquired the front cover of Fragile but um, there was no way I could tell because they didn't send me a picture. Fortunately, I haven't lost many paintings, but maybe over the years, three or four, I think I should put them up on the website just in case people come across them. And then they'll know they're stolen pieces. I find it really odd people stealing paintings because you can't show them to anyone. No. If you've stolen them. It is I, odd, I isn't really it? I really don't understand. I, I get gold because you can melt that down. <laughs> right. Okay. Are you going to use an airbrush? No. What, on this painting? Hmm. What for? I don't know, it's one of our questions. Ah. Smoothing out the background, I guess. That's just what I'm thinking. Um, I don't think it needs it. It might look like it needs it, because it is pretty rough here, but um, I can do that with a, with a paintbrush enough that it'll work. just come out a bit sorry guys I'll leave it here for a while are any of your paintings in museums um, they are not no I have some pieces of work in museums I've got logos in museums and I've got t furniture in two different museums but uh, no paintings at this point Did you ever find your leather-bound sketchbook that I think you left in a cab? Asks Will. <laughs> <laughs> I did, yes. How did you get that back? The, the driver contacted me. Had my name and address in it. Patrick said there should be a Roger Dean museum. It's something that we definitely want to do, isn't it? I really yeah. like the idea of having somewhere you can look at the work and also maybe do workshops and have a cup of tea. Yeah. No, it's... I think a couple of sessions ago I showed some drawings of, of what I'd like to do as a gallery stroke museum which would also include the architecture as well as the paintings. What about your work that's in the V&A? Is that viewable? Uh, occasionally. Um, th they did um, uh, an exhibition called So You Want to Have a Revolution and that was 
not long ago, a year ago, a couple of years ago. And in that they had one piece of mine. But they had it, this, it, it wasn't a general exhibition, it was particularly of the time. And I think that was the only picture I'd done that, f that fitted into their broad brush theme. Well, that looks interesting. What? That Just black smudge. <laughs> <laughs> the black smudge. Yeah. We did have a question earlier about, oh, it's a tree branch. <laughs> there you go. Ah, nice. Uh, we had a question earlier about what was it like growing up in the swinging 60s? I was at college in the 60s. I, I mean, I grew up in the 50s, I guess. So I heard. Um, blue suede shoes when I was 12 years old so that was like growing up um, by the time I was at the Royal College I don't know it was interesting time no question about that so what I'm painting here is not a painting of a tree it's, I'm just roughing out where it might be But I can paint in a lot of detail later. But I'm, I'm making sure that the lines I make, apart from that one branch, are not too solid so that there's scope for movement and change. Are you using one of those older brushes to do that, or is that a newer brush? <laughs> it's a it's a new brush. I'm just curious. That was my question. Ah. Um, Chengis wants to know what's behind. Oh, I missed the question a little bit. But what's behind? What's the what's the harvest logo about? What's the harvest logo about? Mm. What's well, the story there's a, behind there's that? a mixture of some old symbols I'd seen of planting a seed, so that's what it was about. Harvest, that was based on that name. <laughs> Someone says, are you using black paint, black in caps lock? <laughs> I'm using black paint, and I have said I very rarely do or never do. But You're out of shot, Dad. I put those bottles of water there for a reason. Oh, so I don't step back? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I get Please bossed about dead. terribly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, I'm going to have to paint over these, this outline of this tree, so I'm not going to put any more in until I've done more work on the background. But it's it's given me an indication of where I'm going with that side of the painting. You were saying that you don't usually use black. Yeah, but that's right. What? Sorry. But what? I've done it twice in this painting on, on the horizon line and for the tree. Um, it's usually way too harsh and unnecessary, but trying to find something that would stand out against quite a dark sky. So I've done the top in the dark blue and the bottom in the black but most of that black will be gone by the time I finish okay the challenge for me here is to have the trees in and have a landscape dip down and the eye follow it down over a foreground and see the glow of the subject matter in the middle distance. So that's what I'm going to try and that's a journey I'm going to try and take the viewer on.
I was expecting to cover up this rock formation from about here down, but I've painted below, not so much because it's going to be seen, it's not, but just in case bits show through the painting, it needed to be consistent. Dave says only one light source, question mark? No. There's, at the moment there's a light source from inside this structure that's illuminating it from the inside. And there is a slight light source from the horizon. And there might be a very gentle ambient light from the sky as well. So yeah, more than one light source. I thought they meant while you were working, but maybe that is what they oh. meant. Oh. Well, at the moment, yes. Yeah. Um, I've got daylight coming from the right hand side and I've got artificial light from the left. So two light sources, really. Gina wants to know how long does it usually take to finish a painting and she says she knows you've probably answered this a few times but I think it is something people like to know. So how long does it usually take to finish a painting? Mm. Um, gosh, some have taken me a couple of hundred hours, some have taken 50 hours. Some have taken five minutes, like the colour sketches. Um, I have done a couple of paintings where the basic structure has been very quick. I think I showed one of those on the first day, which was... Um, uh, it's a, it was called Electric Sheep. That was a swirl of paint on a sky. So I painted the sky, the paint, and I was probably at that point where I was only having to add the highlights in about 20 minutes. The highlights, though, took a few hours. Sorry, it, I feel like I interrupted you doing something. No, no, no. No, no, no. I'm, I was just looking at the sketches to see what I can work in here. And at the moment, I'm thinking now I've got to work on light. Get the light, the light source here. And I'm not quite sure how to do that yet. I think I'm going to do it with a, a zinc white. Hang on a second. Mm. I'll need to get that. I wonder how other artists do this because I suppose with us watching you, there's a lot of time where you're just thinking or looking or getting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would say in a 10 hour painting session I probably spend three hours actually applying paint the rest of the time staring into space or staring at the painting do you remember that bit I like this bit in the Big Bang Theory where they said to each other right let's get to work and they had this montage and it was just endless scenes of them looking at a blackboard but sitting in different positions I think that's probably a lot what this is like as well isn't it there's a lot of just looking at it which doesn't yes. make for great TV. Yes. I mean, it's for me, that process of just staring at it is very important. Um, and it's really where I get to know the painting because once it's done, it often goes from here. And I don't get to see it much after that. Zinc white as opposed to titanium white. Titanium white could paint that. It's very nearly opaque but zinc white is very transparent so I can build up I can think hmm I can just add a little bit of a glow here and I can brighten it and or leave it um, Michael asked which part of the painting do you intend for the square cover do the you know yet the cover mm. I always imagined that this would be the cover from about here, that square. To the left? Yeah. So everything you've done so far won't be on the cover, pretty much. 
it won't only it'll not only not be on the cover, but it's not really the subject of the painting. It's something you pass on your journey to the subject matter of the painting. People are telling me to not bully you. Quite right. I must be in a bit of a mood today. <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> I'll have a little bit more of this whiskey. <laughs> um, Wendell asked, when did you consider yourself successful? When? Mm. I suppose the year before I went to art school is all downhill since then. Except for September the 16th, 1987. <laughs> and that was when that. I was born, guys. Yeah, I know when you were born. I'm not telling you. I'm telling everyone else. Um. Is the full painting for the front and the back cover, Alice asked. I'm Sorry. not quite sure how, how the design will play out. So that's still up in the air. Um, for the moment at least it's the front cover and it might wrap round or it might have a version of it entirely on the back cover I don't know Sora I interrupted you I think you were going to say when you considered yourself successful it's, I, I guess you have your own ideas about that and then to most people that question is answered by third parties I I felt very pleased with different things I'd done at different times in my career and I think for me the two things that really pleased me the most I guess and I thought were successful with this, the sea urchin chair which was exhibited in 1966 and the first prototype well not what prototype the first model of the architecture which was exhibited in what was finished in 1968 although it had been underway from 1965 so they were a big deal for me finishing those I mean I wasn't earning a penny but they felt like a sort of success because I didn't know they would work and both did so I was very happy with that and I had no idea at that point that I would spend a fair chunk of my life painting that had not been, um, it, well it had actually, I'd always thought I would do some, but I never thought I'd earn a living from painting particularly. My ambition, what I wanted to do when I was at school, was to design the future, so I didn't know what kind of job that would be, but it was an idea that I really liked. So yeah, designing and designing the future, that was, that was very important to me and those two projects gave me a real insight into how it might work for me. So I thought they were successful as projects. Hmm. Phil asks, are you using a dry brush for the zinc white? The question was? Are you dry brushing for the no. zinc white? Not really, no. It's, um, it's quite dilute, but you can see it's, I'm putting it on and it's, I 
I'm, I'm spreading it out, but it's going on as a liquid. And we just got an interesting comment. Someone called Adam Fellows said his dad went to school with you in Hong Kong and remembers you drawing them. Good card. Do you remember a Fellows? A Fellows fellow. His name was? Fellows. Fellows. I guess. His dad might have a different name. Yeah, his name is Fellows. What was he at? St George's? I guess he would have been. We'll need your dad's name, Adam Fellows, and see if that works. <laughs> My problem is I can barely remember drawing in Hong Kong. I did, and I still have some of those drawings. But uh... Mike Fellows. Okay, yeah. You don't remember? I apologise. Um, I apologise to you, Dad. Getting seen now. What can I say? Adam, attach a picture of your dad when he was a child, <laughs> and we can try that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A few people have asked, um, "What's what sketchbook do you have from your earliest?" drawing times what's your earliest sketchbook that you still have would um, it be college or do you have anything from before I have paintings from when I was at school but my earliest sketchbooks that are complete as sketchbooks would be 1962 61 61 I'm sure I've seen drawings of yours from when you were a child, though. Yeah, I've got some of that, but not they well. Not in sketchbooks? Yeah, no. I think we should show people some of those. Well? I think it would be encouraging for lots of people. <laughs> Let's see how bad I was back then. Yeah. No, they were lovely. They were lovely. Um, Did I see a badger one? I feel like I saw a badger one. Yeah, there's in the views, sweet. there's a picture of a badger that I painted when I was at, um, in the second year at school, at a secondary school. So I would have been just 12, just turned 12. I think we should show those at some point. Okay. Yeah. Don wanted to know, with a painting this size, do you, how do you get a digital file of it? How do I what? How do you get a digital file? Oh, um, there's a company in New Haven called Howard King, and um, they have a camera which looks like an old-fashioned 5x4 camera. But it can take hugely high resolution scans. It's a camera in that it's not a contact, but it can take uh, gigabyte scans. So that's that's how and where I get it done. Do you like the work of Ralph Steadman and have you ever met him? Cindy asks. Um, well, that's an interesting question because um, I just before the lockdown, an American collector of Ralph Steadman's work had arranged for us to meet. So I guess that might take place after the lockdown. Um, he lives not very far from here. Yeah, yeah, I like his work. Yeah, definitely like his work. Hmm. Oh, the last question was a little bit too long and I'm missing some of it. Um, I've forgotten the name or I didn't see the name of the questioner, um, but somebody asked, did you ever study bonsai trees? 
a lot of your trees look like bonsai trees. <laughs> Did I study them? Um, not in the sense that I studied subjects at college or school, but I, we do have here a lot of books on bonsai and I do like them and I have gone to look at them. Um, I'm a terrible person for bonsai though because I tend to let them grow. I don't keep them small, but I do admire them when other people do. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm a big fan. I suppose we have 10 books at least on mm. bonsai. Yeah? I saw a brilliant book and I don't think it was here. I think it was at work, Ugh, but it was about, so basically, you know, those little figures that you get like little fishermen or little animals and yeah. they're little bronze figures. Um, they are to give you the eye view that you should be looking at the tree from. Oh. So if there's a little cockerel at the bottom, you're supposed to get on eye level with that and look at the tree right. and sort of bear in mind the scale of that animal. And there was a whole book of photographs of bonsai trees from the perspective of those little figures. So they all looked like real trees. It was really interesting. Well, Japanese bonsai is very stunningly beautiful and very austere. But Chinese bonsai do have miniature bridges and figures and ponds in it. So they, they go much more for the modeling than the Japanese version. I thought that about when I was reading Lafcadio Hearn's book of Japanese ghost stories, at the end there's a few Chinese ones as well. And I think it really needed them because the Japanese ones are really hard going. They're really tragic and tough and miserable and gut wrenching. And then the Chinese ones are suddenly like full of food and fabric and parties and color. <laughs> and it does seem to be a bit of a thing comparative thing that you can do between the two cultures. They do have some fun with things. Japan pairs things back a lot more. They do, yeah. Um, Janelle wants to know, what do you think about the costs of design colleges? You're out of shop. I think the costs of design colleges, the problem really, I'm going to pause oh. painting here and, and face the camera. You've got him started, you know. The problem with the college is, is not so much the cost, but whether you get value for money. And I would say most art students don't get value for money. It's expensive, but you get taught poorly, mostly. I would say. You went to Lancaster where they did a course called Scientific and Natural History Illustration, mm. which the prospectus was brilliant, but by the end of the first year they cut out half of the really brilliant staff and they'd stopped teaching a lot of the subject. I shouldn't be negative. <laughs> okay. I'll it move was on. great while it lasted. <laughs> But we were talking, weren't we? We found this really amazing building in Wales. I can't, I don't know the name of the architecture, but they do this thing. It sort of looks like Tudor buildings with white and black beams going across the white paint on the frontage. And we, it was up for sale. And it was it like the one of the a very early printing manufacturer of books. That was the base for the Granada. Grano Granada? I can't <laughs> pronounce it. Yeah, I can't pronounce it. Yeah, for the Welsh Printing Press, famous art book printing press. Mm. It was based there. But Very beautiful place. Yeah. We should make an art college there. Yeah, well, there you go. Okay, I put three or four coats of uh, zinc white there, so it's it's beginning to look misty, it's beginning to knock it back. I haven't put that into the sky and I probably won't. I could put snow on the trees, that would make them stand out, look visible. 
Hmm. Well, that's going to take a little bit of pondering. Any more questions? Got lots of questions, lots of questions, just checking the time. So we've got five more minutes. Um, let's see, this is in order. Oh, they're coming thick and fast, and I can't read them fast enough. Uh, will you ever release a Blu-ray of your artwork? A Blu-ray? Or a disc or a something Yes, of. yes, yes. We started work on that in earnest in 2016. And we've been collecting footage ever since. So yes, I think we will. It's a definite project. And with a, a building quite a... a um, a collection of bits of footage, including going back as far as 1976. I'm getting some lovely comments from people. Thank you. <laughs> Please, Blue Ray of artwork. Yeah, we're, 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 we're going to go there. John wants to know, what do you do to relax after a day of painting? What do I do to relax? Mm. Well, Next millennium, I'll tell you. <laughs> I don't know. I find painting very relaxing. Actually, I find it enormously relaxing. If I had a few days with nothing to do except relax, I would paint. He also does watch quite a lot of Jonathan Creek with me at the moment. <laughs> He's being I watch a little it. bit disingenuous saying I work to relax <laughs> I, I watch anything with you <laughs> whatever you're watching um, what do you think of Kandinsky's work um, well I'm always intrigued with abstract expressionism but not wildly enthusiastic. I think it's part of the process of painting, an important part, to be honest. Um, yeah, a useful, important part. I can't think of a spare space in this place where we would hang, a, hang one if we had one. Hang a what? Kandinsky. Oh, right. Sorry. Sorry, I'm trying to, I'm writing and looking and thinking at the same time. Okay. Um, Jonathan suggested that we do a kind of Patreon set of how to, how to paint lessons, which I think would be a really good idea because actually on these, the video quality is really low. And if we did a kind of proper set of videos that weren't live, we could get in closer and we could make some really good kind of more gradual edited better and i could learn how to paint mm -hmm. yeah i think that's a good idea i i don't really like criticizing other artists work um i am hugely critical of the art world I think it's incredibly repressive, but other artists, by and large, I tend to enjoy looking at their work. All of them, actually. Um, someone actually asked on that topic, what art do you hang on your walls? What art? I have no choice. <laughs> I suppose, I've, I've, yeah. I've got quite a few of my paintings. I've got quite a few of Freya's on the wall. Um, Whenever I have an exhibition, though, it's it's brilliant because it's an opportunity to see clusters of them in one go, which I don't really have very often, except during an exhibition. Um, the touring exhibitions are, are small, but good fun. And every now and again, when we do a really big uh, retrospective, I just love it. I just love being in amongst them. And it happens too infrequently, but I love it. When, when it does, it's just fantastic. As always, there are lots of really good questions that I want to ask Dad, and 
we've sort of run, oh gosh, uh, run out of time. Um, but if those of you who still have questions or would like to ask again, because I haven't asked Dad, please join us on, what day is it today? It's Monday, isn't it? Wednesday. On Wednesday. Please join us on Wednesday at 7 p.m. and Friday, as usual, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 p.m. English summer time. Um, and ask again. These are really good questions that I'm missing. Sorry. Get, get me one last one. You want one last one? Okay. One last one. One last one. <laughs> People are just saying nice things. Ah. Uh, what paintings do you hang in the doll's house? That's a question for me. I'll, I'll answer that next time. <laughs> Dad wants one more. <laughs> um, if you, do you like listening to music while you're painting? If so, what music? Well, I've answered that. And the answer is, I tend not to listen to music when I'm painting. I tend to listen to something that's much more distracting, such as a story. Um, when I'm writing, I listen to music and I can listen to almost any kind. I've been listening to a couple of albums of Tibetan Bells recently with Henry Wolfe and Nancy Henning. I've been, yeah, listening to Yes, listening to opera. It's, I love Led Zeppelin too. It's, there's not really anything I, I wouldn't listen to. Okay, so thank you guys so much for joining us. It's, it's always so nice having your comments and questions. Thank you very much indeed. I'm going to give you guys a last little shot of what Dad did in this session so you can see a bit better. Um, it would be good if we could get a bit of the light a little bit better. That doesn't help at all, does it? No, it will bounce back if you get too square. Okay, we'll figure that out. You want, you want closer? We want somewhat closer. So this is the tree. You can see when you get in close, it's very smudgy. <laughs> it's smudgy. But far away, a tree. <laughs> smudgy good grief <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining us again and hopefully we'll see you all on wednesday thank you <laughs>